like it. Give me a panorama, will you?
with me. <laughs> I want y'all to know this is my boy. I know, Rosalie, he's yours, but he's mine too. Randy is an absolute delight. I think we all are quite aware of that. It's very hard. I'm holding on to him because it's very hard for him to take this and to stand here. But we all know the kind of person that Randy is. He is true blue. He is solid. He has appropriated what God has provided for him to study the Word of God and the foundational studies that he has. The phenomenal, kind, compassionate spirit that he has and the genuine love for people, the servant's heart that he has will take him far in doing what it is that our God has called him to do. I don't know what the Lord is going to do with him. But I know this, he has his hand on him, has for a good while. He has been obedient to the charge, and now it's placed in him. He will be very faithful to build upon that knowledge, and we will see what our God does with it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. preaching, I could go over the Testament. <laughs> then they got a bigger book. <laughs> then they had to get a bigger Bible. Then they had to get the bigger font. <clears throat> I told you all that to tell you I brought notes. <laughs> you should be through by seven or eight or nine or ten. You be by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you should be on the way out. <laughs> There's a story about a a baseball player. He went to talk with his coach. And one other thing I forgot. He said, what's wrong? He said, coach, I've struck out seven times. The coach, the coach, the coach took a ball he had and threw it over to him. Said, Autograph that ball for me. The coach looked at the boy straight in the eye. You have struck out seven times. However, you have made three home runs. Now listen to me, boy. That's batting 300. That is the way Mickey Mantle and the others are in the Hall of Fame. You're dwelling on the failures, and you're batting 300. You're well on your way. The ball you autographed one day I will sell that ball to send my children to school because of your fame. I'll do that. Going to school when you're older in life and working to help support a family is not the easiest thing to do. Now that's the pastor's lines. I had them already. I ask a question. Do you control education, or does education control you? Where's my man? Paul <laughs> <laughs> said it like this. He can read, too. <laughs> For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ shall be made of none effect. Sometimes we ask ourselves, which way should I go? And that's when we say what to do when we don't know what to do. Always remember your accomplishments are not just your own, but of a family Amen. and friends who have encouraged you and tell you how they had scraped or worked extra hours to attend school. These people scraped their way to success, largely with the help of others, who came together to make it possible. We must remember freedom does not come cheap. You are intimately and intricately connected to us. <coughs> Today's politics tries to divide us. When we got here not by the left or by the right, people with love in their hearts who came together and moved forward is the reason we're here. When our country began, the men pledged their lives and their fortunes by saying, give me liberty or give me death. 
Life is always full of contradictions. You want wealth? You got to create value. If you want to fly, you got to fall down off. If you want to be a winner, you got to savor the lessons from the loss. If you want to change the world, you first have to change yourself. True greatness does not lie in the single acts of heroism, but in people who show kindness and decency to others every day. Kindness is the oil that removes the friction from a family or from your friends. We must begin in our lives to have the courage to be who we are created to be. Not to play small in this world, not to be a carbon copy of the person next to us, we're born to fit in. We're not born to fit out, but we're born to stand out. We must take an oath to improve the world, not with words, but with actions. And don't make your oath with your hand over your heart. Put your heart with both hands outstretched to give, to serve, and to do. You know the story of Moses. The mother began to make a plan. She made an ark to bull rush. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe, and in this act laid the defeat of Satan, the preservation of a nation, the fulfillment of prophecy, and the furtherance of God's plan concerning the coming of the seed of a woman. Restoring confidence in a person also fits with the thought. What to do when you don't know what to do. A teacher was asked in class one day, what do you want to do when you get big? Ball player? President? Knows I want to be a teacher. And on and on it went. One little boy didn't answer. He said, what do you want to be? Well, I want to be possible. What do you mean by possible? My mother is always telling me that I'm impossible. <laughs> and when I grow up, I just want to be possible. <laughs> I do not know how many strikeouts Babe Ruth made, but I'm sure he made more strikeouts than home runs. But we don't know him for the strikeouts. We know him because he finished his course with the highest level of home run. Faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day. But not to me only, but to all them that love his appearance. So the Lord, you have knocked the home run. Amen. Not so. Never think on your failures. Think about your successes. For your reward, you have received a much-deserved diploma for your, from your principal or superintendent. You will always also receive a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to you. So I say, God bless you. God bless your wife and this family. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Karen a while ago, I said, after she gave me the list of all the people who were going to be sharing and talking, I said, I'm just going to step up out there and just say, Amen! Amen. <laughs> Everybody will be happy. And she gave me a look that said, that's not going to be enough. <laughs> I'm going to do just a little bit more than that. My wife and I, Marion, we have uh, learned to know and love and appreciate Randy, Randy and Karen and their family over quite a number of years. And as I was thinking about the accomplishment, uh, Randy, that you've been able to make, and I think it is, it is commendable. And especially as we, I'm not going to impose anything on his age, but as we get a little older, it's not as easy as it was when we right. were younger, right? Amen. But I thought, here's the thought that came to me. Something uh, that takes place like this, that is significant like this is, uh, at this point in your life usually doesn't happen as a solo flight. Amen. You have to have a co-pilot right. and probably a couple of good kids too mm -hmm. that love to uh, work with you. So I really think 
we ought to give Randy and Karen and the family an applause. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This little scripture came to my mind over the last few days, and I thought, when I thought about Randy, I thought, I really believe, Randy, if I know him the way I think I do, that his desire was not to impress this crowd here tonight when he had reached this point in graduation. Not that that's not a commendable good thing, but I think his heart's passion and desire, because of the quality of person that he really is, he wanted to do something that would honor God, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not have to be ashamed. And so, Randy, Randy I commend you tonight. Amen. And thank God for what he's done in your life. And may this just be another beginning of a level that God's going to use you for His glory and honor and praise. Amen. And I feel very honored to be able to say these few words. Thank you and amen. Now, if y'all haven't seen the cake, you need to go take a look at it because we're getting ready to cut it. Speech, speech. So, oh, no. What am I, I, I want to hear from them. Um, come and help me. We'll get the cake all cut up and stir. <laughs> I want to hear from the man.